one story I can tell you, it's a very practical story for the, the kids in the audience. If you have a pet tarantula and it starts to just lie dead, do not let your mother put it in the toilet. Do not do this. What it's doing is that once a year, a tarantula will shed its skin. And it takes a long time to shimmy out of that old skin. And here's one doing it. One leg, two legs, three legs, and so forth. And after about a week, it, she's looking great again. But you won't believe how many tarantulas get lost this way. My favorite story with tarantulas was from a few years ago. I went to uh, look for the cave tarantula with a guy named Peter Sprouse, a caver down in Mexico. And uh, we went just all over Mexico. Just the, the cave tarantulas had only been, uh, were only known from dead specimens. No one had seen a live one. I wanted to see a live one. What do they do? That was the story for me. So we just wandered around. And these guys would just find caves and uh, the sides of hills and start running into them with their ropes over their shoulders. They were very enthusiastic. And we eventually found a cave where we went in about a quarter mile and we found this cave tarantula. And I had been tortured by these cavers for some distance because I'm trying to keep up with them and carrying my camera gear at the same time. So I was actually somewhat delighted when Peter here makes the mistake of breathing on a cave tarantula. No one in history has breathed on a cave tarantula. It turns out that the response of the cave tarantula is to run up your pant leg. <laughs> and Peter is screaming, what do I do? What do I do? And I scream back, don't hurt it. It's an endangered species. <laughs> it promptly bit him. And we had a long discussion of what we'd do if we had to carry him out. But it was all false. Tarantulas can give you a nasty bite, but they're not usually dangerous. Now, at the end of that cave, another half mile in, after many hours, we found an Aztec burial chamber with some giant spiders on it in the skulls, living in the skulls and in the pottery. We still haven't revealed where this cave is. I'm going to close with a fun little spider. It's a jumping spider. They're found outside this building. They're all over the park. You can go look for them. Perhaps you saw them with Ed Wilson uh, a couple days ago. But uh, they are only about a quarter inch long in many cases. And they jump from place to place. That's how you know it's a jumping spider. It's hopping around. They're very good at leaping. And they leap on their prey. They are sometimes rather curious. A uh, species from Sri Lanka, like this one, is called Murmuracli lupata. Have, uh, they've got this long nose thing that sticks out front. And they carry this thing around, and it looks rather ridiculous. And you don't know what they're doing with it until they walk up to another male of the same species, and the nose splits down the middle, and they unfurl two enormous fangs. And they fight with these like gladiators at a duel. And the one... On the left here is rearing up. They actually clash back and forth. This one has just won the battle. He's kind of rearing up. Have you ever seen the movie Rocky, kids? I don't know. It's a couple years old now. But they rear up sort of like Rocky in the ring and do this kind of thing, which may just be a signal for the other one to keep away. That one's about to run off. Animals are so sexy and colorful and full of great stories. It's too bad that humans don't have some of these features. And I want you to encourage all the kids, particularly, to go out and look for stories and create their own color in the lives around them. The stories out there, you can make them colorful. You can do things that are colorful. I sometimes do things that are more colorful than other times. Uh, this was a recent trip to Easter Island with uh, my now wife, Melissa. And uh, there was a lot of color involved with that. So whatever you do, find a story. Turn things into stories. Whether you want to go into biology or engineering or finance, everything can be a story. But draw a lot of things back to nature. Some of the finest stories are out there for you to enjoy in the natural world.